Hello everyone. Uh, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at some Winsor & Newton Professional watercolours. Uh, this is another brand I've wanted to try for quite a long time but they're very very expensive here so I've never quite gotten around to it. Um, luckily for me I've got a very kind subscriber who sent me all these paints to try so big thank you to them for that. Uh, okay let's get started. Right, first up we have Windsor Lemon PY175. Uh, it's a beautiful, clean, cool yellow. Um, I've tried the Holbein and Daniel Smith version of this pigment, and this one is just as good, um, maybe even better. Uh, next we have Cadmium Yellow PY35. Okay, this is a really vibrant, clean yellow. Um, it's it's quite opaque, just as a cadmium yellow should be. Yeah, it looks great. Uh, next we have Transparent Yellow, which is PY150. Um, I've been using the Rembrandt version of PY150 quite a lot recently. Um, this one seems quite a bit nicer to me I think. Um, I feel like it gets much darker than the Rembrandt but it still thins out to the beautiful glowing yellow. Yeah really impressed with this one. Uh, next up is Quinacridone Gold. Uh, this is a three pigment mix made up from PY150, which is Nickel Azo Yellow, PV19, Quinacridone Violet, and PR206, which is Quinacridone Maroon. Yeah, it looks like a very nice Quin Gold to me. Um, I especially like how dark it can get. Uh, next up we have Cadmium Scarlet, PR108. Wow, this one flows really nicely when it touches the water. I know some people don't like to use cadmiums, but personally, I love them. Yeah, this one is a very nice, vibrant, warm red. Uh, next we have Windsor Red PR254. Uh, PR254 is not a pigment I've used very much, um, but this is a very nice middle red. I always feel like I should be using more non-earth reds in my palette, but whenever I put them in my palette, they just sit there unused. Uh, next we have Cadmium Red Deep, which again is PR108. A very nice paint. I must say, I'm, I'm really enjoying these Windsor & Newton paints so far. They just paint out so beautifully. Uh, next is Alizarin Crimson PR83. Uh, this is the second time I've tried this PR83 pigment. Um, I know it's fugitive and it will fade over time when exposed to sunlight. But it is really nice. I can definitely see why so many people still like using it. Next we have Permanent Carmine. Uh, Windsor & Newton don't tell us what pigment is in this one. Uh, so I guess it must be a big secret. Yep, it is a really, really nice paint though. And last on this top line we have Potter's Pink PR233. Um, I've seen a lot of people rave about this pigment, but it's never really interested me to be honest. Um, but looking at it here, I can I can see why people love it. The granulation is just so nice.
Okay, so moving on to the second row, we have quinacridone magenta, PR122. Uh, it's not permanent magenta, sorry, I wrote that out wrong. Uh, this is a nice, vibrant version of this color. Uh, I, I have the Rembrandt version, and I'd say this one is much better. Uh, next we have Permanent Rose, PV19. Oh, lots of flow when it hits the water. Again, it's nice and vibrant. Um, I think I prefer the rose to the magenta before it, to be honest. Uh, yeah, they're, they're both very nice colours, but I think I'd pick the... Uh, the rose, the PV19. Uh, now we have quinacridone violet, PV55. Uh, this is a completely new pigment to me, so I wasn't really sure what to expect. But, wow, it's a beautiful colour. Uh, purples and violets are not really my thing, but this one does look great. Okay, moving on, we have Cobalt Violet, PV14. Again, I've tried the Rembrandt version of this one, and after a bit of a rocky start, I had eventually grown to like it. Um, but I'd say this one, yeah, this one's pretty similar, actually. It's a lovely, delicate, granulating violet. Uh, next we have Ultramarine Violet, PV15. Again, I've tried the Rembrandt version of this one, um, but I think I think this Windsor & Newton one is, is a lot nicer. Um, it seems a bit more highly pigmented to me. Uh, next we have Smolt, Dumont's Blue, PV15. When I saw this one, I, I was really eager to try it. Um, I wasn't quite sure what to expect, but it kind of feels like a warmer, less vibrant ultramarine, maybe. Wow, it really, it really is a beautiful paint. Uh, next is Indanthrene Blue, PB60. There's a lot of these paints that I have tried the Rembrandt versions. Um, and again, I much prefer the Windsor & Newton. Um, this one seems much more vibrant to me. Uh, now on to French Ultramarine, PB29. Uh, most brands have a lovely, vibrant PB29, and Windsor & Newton's no exception. Um, yeah, this French Ultramarine granulates beautifully. The only other French Ultramarine I can remember trying was Schmincke's version. Um, yeah, I, I'd put this one on a par with that, definitely. Uh, next up is Cobalt Blue, PB28. Oh. Hmm. Is it me or does this Cobalt Blue seem very light? Looks looks more like a Cerulean Blue to me. Hmm. Um, maybe I picked up the wrong pan or something. Oh well. It's a beautiful colour, but I don't think it's Cobalt Blue. Yeah, I think I might have... Got a cerulean by mistake.
Uh, next we have Windsor Blue Red Shade, PB15. Uh, the Rembrandt version of this is my most used blue. Um, I'd say, yeah, this one is very nice as well. Pretty similar. Okay, now onto the third row. And we're starting with Manganese Blue Hue, PB15. Now, I never used the real Manganese Blue, um, so I don't really know how this is supposed to look. But yeah, this looks like a nice bright sky blue color with some granulation going on. Um, I can't really decide if I like it or not. Maybe it's a bit too bright, I don't know. Uh, now moving on to Cerulean Blue, PB35. Um, I've never really liked a PB35 Cerulean Blues. They just look like, kind of like a dirty blue to me. Um, yeah, this one is much the same. Not particularly loving it. Uh, I much prefer a PB36, I think, for a Cerulean. Uh, next we have Thalo Turquoise, PB16. Um, I know many people love this pigment, and it is a very beautiful colour. I've just never seen much of a use for it in my palette. Um, I'm going to experiment with it a bit though, to see what all the fuss is about. Who knows, maybe I'll end up liking it. Uh, next we have Windsor Green Yellow Shade, PG36. Uh, for some reason I've only ever tried the PG7 Blue Shade of Thalo Green. Um, and I've never liked it really, or never got on with it anyway. Um, this yellow shade does look a lot nicer to me though. I'll have to test it out in some paintings to see, yeah, to see what I can do with it. Okay, next we have Olive Green. Uh, this is a three pigment mix made up from PB156, which is Thalo Blue Red Shade, PR101, which is Synthetic Red Iron Oxide, and PY65, which is Hansa Yellow Deep. This looks like a good olive green to me. Um, yeah, I think I like it better than most that I've tried. And next we have Raw Sienna. This is a mix of PR101 Synthetic Red Iron Oxide and PY42 Synthetic Yellow Iron Oxide. It's a little disappointing that it's a two pigment mix. Um, yeah, it does look very nice though, I've got to say. Yeah, I think I might like it better than my Rembrandt Raw Sienna. And it definitely rewets much easier. I don't really see much granulation going on in it though. And now we have Burnt Sienna, PR101. Um, I usually like my Burnt Siennas to be PBR7, but I've had a lot of people sing this one's praises to me, so it's nice to be able to finally try it out. Um, on first impression, it's a nice vibrant paint with a little granulation going on. But for me, it does look just a bit too orange. I'll have to use it for a bit to see if it works for me. Okay, now for the final paint, uh, we have Davies Grey. Uh, this is made up from PBK19, which I believe is black chalk. Uh, PBK6, which is lamp black. PG17, chromium oxide and PW5, which is a white of some kind. Uh, not the most exciting colour, but I think I, it could have some uses, you know, painting walls and or stone walls, should I say. Okay, that's all of them swatched out. Oh, I just very quickly wanted to go back to the cobalt blue and swatch it out again. Uh, 
all oh, right, this, this looks much better to me. So yeah, I don't know what I did there. I must have either picked up a wrong pan or painted it out too weakly with too much water. Um, it's definitely a nice cobalt blue and it doesn't seem to granulate too much, but yeah, I quite like that. Okay, and now here they are when completely dry. Now I've heard a lot of mixed opinions about Windsor & Newton professional range, but I've got to say I was pretty wowed by them. I mean, I knew that they would, you know, they would be good colours, but I didn't quite realise how nice they would be to paint with. They gave me the kind of same smooth feeling I get when I use Schmenke paints. Um, I'd also heard that they can be difficult to re-wet once they dried into pans, but I had no problem at all with them. I actually think they re-wet easier than my Rembrandts. I'm quite looking forward to picking 10 or so of these paints for a palette and seeing what they can do. I think if I had to pick my 10 now, I'd probably go with the Windsor Lemon, Quinacridone Gold, Windsor Red, uh, Permanent Rose, Cobalt Violet, uh, Smalt, Windsor Blue Red Shade, Windsor Green Yellow Shade, uh, Raw Sienna, and Burnt Sienna. Yeah, I think that would make a pretty good palette. What would your choices be if you had to make a 10 or 12 colour palette from these? And also, what do you think of the Windsor Newton range as a whole? Um, yeah, let me know in the comments. I'm actually really quite surprised how much I like them. Um, the only problem is that here, they're at least twice the price of other brands, such as Rembrandt, Holbein and Mugello. I mean, are they worth double the price? Probably not. I am going to have a lot of fun though, painting with these. Thank you all for watching, and again, an especially big thank you to the kind subscriber who sent me these paints. I'll speak to you all in the next video. Bye bye.